now that we've got a little bit of decision theory under our belts, we're ready for the big picture. The big picture in machine learning. Specifically focusing on a supervised learning context, but it turns out that many of the other methods unsupervised and, and so forth they, they share a lot in common with the methods that are used for supervised learning, same methods and concepts. And so we will see that. So my goal in these this video and maybe maybe the next is to to show how by thinking by starting from this this decision theoretic idea that we wanted to minimize the expected loss between the true value y, oh we need the loss function in there. The expected loss between the true value y and our prediction f of x, how many of the, the concepts, the core concepts and, and methods in machine learning fall out just naturally from trying to solve this problem. So remember that when we were trying to solve this we observed that the conditional distribution of y given x was the key quantity. This was the key quantity that we needed to solve this the minimization problem. And if we knew this, at least it was a, a became a problem that we could solve in principle. This was the we, we definitely needed to know this. So let's think about first discriminative methods. Discriminative methods model. So a discriminative method says let's take advantage of this fact. The fact that we only really needed this conditional distribution. We didn't really need the marginal distribution on x to, to solve this minimization. And a discriminative approach says estimate these conditional distributions p of y given x directly using your data d. So as always we're in supervised learning we're assuming that we have some data. Maybe I'll write it here. We have some data. x1, y1, and so forth. So the x's are, are typically vectors and the y's would be like from a finite set for classification or real numbers for example for regression. And the discriminative approach says model these conditional distributions directly. Maybe you have some you know, you'll you'll have some family of conditional distributions, but you're going to try to estimate these directly. And this is is a is is taking advantage of the fact that all we this was all we really needed to know. So some examples: k nearest neighbor was doing this, and trees can be viewed as as modeling these conditional distributions, and another type of discriminative methods very commonly used support vector machines are discriminative. So that's just a few examples of discriminative methods which we can contrast with generative methods. Generative methods say, hey, you know, there's this data really comes from a come from a generative process and so you may be missing something. If you just model these conditional distributions, you might be missing out on the fact that that you, you you know you might not be modeling these conditional distributions correctly, because so even though in principle you could always you could always write it this way, this is all you really need. If you're not thinking more generally about the distribution, if you're not paying attention to the distribution of x, the marginal, you might not be modeling this conditional direct uh, correctly. So the generative approach says model the joint distribution using your data. And so just a, a quick comment here. This conditional distribution, this can be advantageous from a statistical perspective because it's much easier to estimate this. This is a much less complicated object than this joint distribution. So statistically speaking, discriminative methods have an advantage in that respect that you can estimate this more, more easily than the joint. But generative models usually have their, they are a, a richer sort of model. So this says estimate this using D 
and then you can always recover the marginal or rather the conditional distribution of y given x by just using the definition of conditional probability and this this generative sort of idea for example for classification you would you might say to generate the generative approach says choose you factor the distribution in this way and you would say choose a y from the marginal on y and then choose x given y that's just the generative the generative process so now for both of these approaches we'll typically have some parameters so let me say let me write we have parameters or latent variables latent var variables are we haven't really talked about them but they're sort of you could think about them for now as a sort of discrete form of parameters parameters we usually think of as continuous usually people use theta for parameters and z for latent variables but I'm going to lump them all together into some theta for now just to make things less complicated so we have some parameters and and or latent variables theta which govern the the distribution so let's think about this this generative case here we could write this distribution as being parameterized by theta but more typically what we will want to do is consider theta to itself be a random variable and so we'll write this instead as the conditional distribution of x and y given theta so we're thinking of theta as being some random object and now these are the quantities that we're interested in in both cases the conditional distribution of y given x in order to solve the, the minimization problem for minimizing our expected loss that's the thing that we want so what does that look like well we're, we're thinking about the data we're, we're conditioning on the data so let me make explicit get a new color here let me make explicit let's think about the data so far we've been sort of thinking about the data as being fixed and non-random but now let's think about the data as being random be a little more general and we'll condition on the data so now the data is just we're thinking of it as random and this so this is this is what we're interested in and we can integrate so we're also thinking of theta as being random so we can integrate out theta I'm writing P for just a general generic sort of distribution this could be if P was discrete this could be a sum if this was a PMF or this could be this would be an integral if, if theta is, is continuous and this would just be if we just directly write this marginalization P theta but let me write it let me go ahead and factor this so we have a nice clean thing so we're gonna write y given theta x and d times theta given x and d so let's rewrite this as y given x d and theta times the probability of theta given x and d so we're just factoring that d theta this thing this is this is the this is the the key sort of expression that arises so we, we started from minimizing expected loss we get this and now we need to integrate out we have these these thetas which are random and in order to solve this by the way that our we've defined our distribution we need to integrate out the thetas because we don't know here we don't know what theta to use right we our model is defined in terms of these parameters but here we don't know what the parameters are we've defined our model when in the in the context of knowing the parameters here so we need to integrate them out 
in order to, 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 to solve for this expression. And this part, so let me just say this part is usually, well, let me put that below. This part is usually nice in the sense that typically we can get a, a, a closed form expression for this part. Oftentimes for regression you define your model in, in you know, this is a defined quantity. Or for classification, so sometimes you would you you would take the you would use Bayes rule to swap the x and y, and then you would to get an analytic expression for this closed form expression. So that part's nice, but this part is oftentimes nasty. This is the posterior distribution of theta given x and d. That's what we call it, the posterior distribution. And oftentimes we cannot get a closed form expression for this part. And further, even if we could get a closed form expression for that part, oftentimes even still this integral is nasty. It's either a nasty integral or maybe a nasty sum if these were discrete, you know, disc uh, some discrete latent variables or something. You get a nasty integral or sum that you cannot do analytically, or you, you can't do. Sometimes you can't even do can't even do it computationally. So this is often solving this problem, computing this is often an intractable problem. And that's where many of the techniques in machine learning come in. They come in in the course of different ways to solve this problem or parts of this problem. So let me stop there for now and in the next video we'll take a look at the different, the different sort of core ideas in machine learning, different areas of machine learning, and how they, how they fit into solving this 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 problem